Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson, Williamson County Mayor. And as we travel around the county today, we're having the opportunity to have a discussion and a frank discussion with Ellie Chen, our new Convention Visitors Bureau Executive Director, I think is your title. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Good for morning. being here with us today. So many people uh, we interview here uh, from our uh, weekly activities. I will see them in the local grocery store. I'll see them out in the way and they'll say, I wish you'd tell me more about that person or let that person tell us. So I'm trying to do a better job. Tell us a little bit about your background, where you were born and how you eventually arrived here in Franklin, Tennessee as the director of the CVB. I was born in Illinois, so I grew up a Midwesterner. Um, I was in Southern Illinois outside St. Louis through junior high school and then we moved up near Chicago. So um, I came to Tennessee initially in 1993 to help start the Nashville Sports Council and we got that off the ground and running. It was an amazing experience in my time with the Nashville Sports Council. I served on the committees to bring both the Predators and the Titans to town, get both of the buildings up and running and built. Um, you know, I'll interrupt you. <laughs> that just seems like eons ago because the Predators and the Titans both have been here a long time. That's 20 years almost. It is. But it is 20 years. It is. And it was, it was an incredible <coughs> experience. You know, I walked around a lot during that period just kind of with my heads in the clouds a little bit saying, what an amazing experience. How often does someone get to bring professional sporting teams to a city or help get uh, an arena built or a stadium built? And, and you know what Middle Tennessee does really well is rally. When there's something great that could happen for a city, they rally and they get excited and they show folks that they want that in their city. So that was a great experience. And then after working for the Sports Council, I. Um, the Sports Council initially was a division of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. And then I popped over full time to the Convention and Visitors Bureau and I oversaw convention services and events. So that was a great experience as well because it was able, it enabled me to get a little bit wider experience than just sports. Um, so primarily my whole career I've been in hospitality and in, I've worked for three different convention bureaus now. So I've been in that world for a long time. And you've been um, in Williamson County for yes. about uh, two months? That's correct. Um, you went through a pool of people, uh, the, the CVB board, the Convention Visitors Bureau board, interviewed several people and picked you out of the hat. And um, for the last couple of months, you've been uh, trying to get your face uh, out to as many uh, organizations and people uh, kind, of, kind of explaining what do, or asking, what do we need to do? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people may not realize exactly the importance or even more, I didn't know we had a CVB. Right. So let's kind of talk a little bit about what the Convention Visitors Bureau, why it's important, and what it means to our communities, not just Williamson County, but we're specifically talking about Williamson County, but just about every county or city has a CVB director. That's correct. CVB's tourism is important because what what we strive to do is to bring visitors and meetings and business professionals to Williamson County to stay in our hotels, pay that hotel motel tax, and that helps create an economic impact for the county and that helps ease the burden of some taxpayers, property taxes and things like that. So our job day in and day out is sell Williamson County and, and all the great attributes that we have here and come in and see what depends on what you like. But I think Williamson County can provide that. So if you want to come to Williamson County and hear great music, walk down the street and pick because it's it's yeah. everywhere. And it, But if you love history, then come on in because we've got amazing history here and you can learn a lot about the Civil War and the Battle of Franklin. So we promote and then we also promote our hotels and our event space because we want to make sure meetings are coming in here and meeting here. And those folks that are coming in for meetings, we want them to have a great experience because we want them to go home and say, I'm going to grab my family. I'm going back to Williamson County and spending some time on the leisure side. So our d job day in and day out is to think how we can promote Williamson County to get people to come in and visit here. 
When you look at the 95 counties um, and the different, almost 100 different CVBs across the state, um, where does Williamson County CVB rank? Where does it fall in? Um, are we as good as, and, <laughs> and do we, what are the other areas we can kind of slot? I mean, everyone has a niche. Sure. Um, and we know Nashville is all about music. And there's much more to Nashville than just music, but where does Williamson County fall in on that? We are ranked number six in the state of 95 counties. So we are up there. We're behind Nashville and Memphis and Chattanooga and the Great Smoky Mountains. So we're in good company. I think our niche, and, the, and I've said this to quite a few people, here's where I think Williamson County, among the many things they do great, but I think Williamson County has done a fantastic job of pre preserving history but progressing at the same time. And I feel like if people want to come in and they want to walk a great American Main Street and they want to go to the Carton Plantation, we have that experience for them. But if they like the newer, slicker, different type of things, well, they can do that too. So to me, it depends on what they like, but I think that we can serve whatever activity they like to do right here in Williamson County. Physically, where are you all located at here in our county? We are right downtown Franklin on the corner of 4th and Main. To many people, Ellie may not remember this, but uh, they are uh, adjacent to the old Pig and Peach. Oh, uh, <laughs> I uh, don't remember that. No, that was before your time. <laughs> but for many of the old timers here, as you're, as you're downtown, you're almost directly across from the Franklin Theater. Yes. And uh, on the other side of the street, have a facility, actually a little place around the side. You can, uh, we have a lot of walk-in people. We do. Buy the t-shirts and the mugs and et cetera, et cetera, and really get a feel. Because at one time, we just had one little spot up by the First Tennessee Bank. Mm -hmm. And that place is still open, by the way. Mm -hmm. But now you have a different place to go. And, and it's amazing how many people just stop by to pick up a brochure and say, what's going on in Williamson County? Yeah, you know, our visitor center. We hope not only our visitors are using that, but we hope our residents are using that because we have a lot of residents that have friends and family come in and stay with them. So please come by the visitor center at any time. We're so happy to provide you with maps. We have people come in to get uh, visitor guides for wedding packets or for family reunions. Yesterday, a big old bus pulled up and 50 people got off this bus <laughs> and they had one hour to spend in Franklin, Tennessee and they were hitting the streets but they came right off the bus right into the visitor center and we sent them out to, with maps and said here you know go have fun for your hours so we want to help both our residents and our visitors. Before I get into some of the activities that are um, on our drawing board for the latter part of this year 2014 if someone did have a family reunion or if they're having a wedding how do they contact you? They can go to our website, um, visit williamson.com. But, you know, it, we would love to help with that. And I think that's one message that we're trying to get out to folks right now. What we can help with is if somebody wants to bring their family reunion or if they have, if they're a part of an association and they want to bring their association meeting, please contact us. We are so happy to help you get hotel rooms, understand the landscape of where you can meet. Maybe they want to park to do a picnic. We've got all that information. Our expertise is knowing where you can meet in Williamson County, where you can stay in Williamson County, and who to contact to get those things done. So we're happy to help with any of that, but you can go to our website and find all of our emails and phone numbers. It's interesting, almost any weekend in this county, somewhere from College Grove to Fairview, and from Spring Hill to Brentwood, and other spots in between, there is something going on. Uh, and all of it, for the most part, is great. It is. Uh, and it is open to the public, and, and people encourage others to be there. But I know we've got one huge event that's coming up. Would you like to expound on that a little sure. bit? Sure. Well, for me, what a wonderful opportunity to come into the Convention and Visitors Bureau four or five months before the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Franklin. It was a marketing plan just that I just walked into, which was fantastic. But the community has really come together to plan the events around the 150th. And we are working closely with um, Franklin's Charge and you know all the battlefield executives and marketers to really promote. There's a lot of activity starting on November 13th at the Franklin Theater 
Robert Hicks is doing an old time radio show called A Guitar and a Pen. Um, it's ten dollars to get in and the money goes to Franklin's Charge to help with Battlefield Reclamation. So what I love about the 150th activities is that again there's something for everyone. I'm sure Eric Jacobson, you might have had him on already to talk about the reenactment, reenactments on the 14th and the 15th. So if, if history, go do that. But if you love music, Robert has this great program planned. Um, and then we're working really closely with the state because we're their signature event this year. So over at the Franklin, uh, I'm sorry, at the factory, there is a series of free events yes. on Saturday. They do ask that you go online and register even though it's free just so they'll have an idea of how many people are going to come so they're prepared for it but there's a lot of historians coming in and there's going to be workshops and speeches and different presentations so that's going to be an action-packed weekend everybody should plan to stay in Williamson County that weekend to well, experience and, it and I suspect <laughs> a lot of our hotels are tickled to death for this event. absolutely yes because and and that's what that's what these great events do you don't always have to create an event or create a big meeting but with um, Pumpkin Fest later in October, and then we have Dickens of a Christmas, and we have the 150th. Those also bring a lot of people to Williamson County and helps fill our hotels, and those are wonderful events for us. Yeah, I think sometimes we, we, we're very blessed here in Williamson County from the perspective of a good, healthy, vibrant business market. Mm -hmm. We have some major employers in our community <coughs> that bring in on a nightly basis, Monday through Friday, <coughs> Excuse me. Different men and women that are coming in to go to to uh, for sales, uh, for workshops. Whether you're talking about a Nissan or a Healthways or any of the other major corporations here in town, but at those weekends, <coughs> on the weekends there are also many activities that are going on in our community, and all of those activities help us to hold our property taxes down. That's where I'm going with this. That's correct. Other events coming up? Um, so let's see, Leapers Fork has their chili cook-off on October 18th. <coughs> Nolansville, I, I'm having a hard time just keeping up with the activities they're doing over there. They are they are a really vibrant community right now and Brentwood is getting ready to open their new park. So you know my husband just came to town last week. We've been out every night this week. Have you? And he, yeah and he said this is incredible how much activity is happening in this county and so we're having a blast but I think it's just what's your niche and what do you like to do and we'll get you out there and get you active. How do you see the CVV over the next few years uh, developing and, and, and um, some of the areas that, that you're focusing in on? Uh, it, it's almost a natural that the business community will have those men and women that come in that we talk about Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. Some of them come in on Sunday and stay the week. But how do you see the CVB developing? Because you're really an extension of so many of the activities that go on in the community, and there's only one you. Well, well, there is a whole team at the CVB, and a, and a great team that's very committed and very passionate about Williamson County and how we can promote Williamson County. I think there's some areas of opportunities for us. Um, the more I meet with folks, the more I visit the wonderful park systems that we have here, the, with Harlandsdale being um, being renovated and open, I think there's a great opportunity for us to bring more equine events to Williamson County. Music is huge and there's a huge opportunity for us to tap into that market because each of these markets, corporate, even though we've got amazing corporate headquarters here, we can still build on that market. And each of those markets have associations that have meetings. For instance, we received a request for a proposal last week for equine dentistry. Well, equine dentistry? Dentistry, yes. And then, of course, somebody asked me recently if horses wear braces, and I don't know the answer. But, but so there's, a <laughs> <laughs> there's all these little niches within those industries that this is a great place for them to meet because we have the horses, we have the land, we have the hotel rooms, we have the meeting space. And so I think there's a couple markets like that that we can really look into, and even history. There's a lot of groups. I worked really closely with the National Education Association and the National Teachers Association, and they both love history. And when they came to cities that I was in before, that was a big part of their program. So we're reaching out to them to see if they've got meetings that could fit in Williamson County as well. How does the CVB in Williamson County, 
how do they play with the CVB in Davidson County? Because clearly they would be the big boy in the Middle Tennessee area. <laughs> they are, but you know, they're wonderful and they're really great to work with. The reality is this, whenever Nashville gets full, people are coming to Williamson County. Um, we are a natural overflow location because we're so close, because we have wonderful properties. Um, and Nashville is a great city right now. It is at the top of its game. And so we're working with not only the Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation, but we're also working with the hotel concierge. We get a lot of people that are like, I'm staying at the Omni and the concierge. I told him I had a free day and he said, well, then you have to go to Franklin. So we're making sure that folks up in Nashville are trained and educated about what we have to offer here. So they're sending people our way. I would think that the many meetings that I sit on, on on a weekly and monthly basis that we, we we talk about, we have a new buzzword, not a new buzzword, it's been around for a long time, it's regional issues. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly one of them that uh, we have healthiest discussions on is in the area of transportation. How to get people from point A to point B and traffic congestion and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and mayors from all cities and counties sit down at the table and we realize, all of us realize, the big gorilla in the room is Davidson County. It's a good gorilla. It's a it's a it's one that climbs on the Empire State Building and is uh, beating the chest, but at the same time very sensitive to what's going on in that community. And the success of Davidson County also depicts the success of so many of the surrounding counties. Yes. Now we all like to think that Williamson County has the lock and the mold on certain things, just like Wilson County does, and the other areas do. But we all have to learn to play and feed off from the other. There are many, many events that come to Williamson County now that people want to go see the Grand Ole Opry. Mm -hmm. And what that means for them. Uh, our community is made up of about 50% of the people that weren't even born in this state. We have a very strong uh, economic community, um, healthy jobs, great schools. So you put all that in the basket, uh, it's clear to me that, that your job is how do you get around to doing all of these different <laughs> events. Now I don't think for a moment in the next day or two are you going to knock off Sevier County and Pigeon Fords <laughs> and, not, and uh, uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee by any stretch of the imagination. The Smoky Mountains and Dollywood just have a natural attraction for people. Yeah. But there are so many things that people do come here, and I have the opportunity, just like you do, to see them walking up and down the street, seeing those tour buses stop. You've got 50 minutes to go spend your money. <laughs> right. How do we keep all this going, Ellie? Well, and that's what we're working on right now, because I think what we need to do is start filling the funnel for future. Um, we are in a great place right now. Nashville's doing great, which means we're feeding off that, and we're doing great. But what I've been talking to a lot of our board members about and our city and community leaders is how are we going to make sure we're doing great in 2016? You know, 2015, the first part of 2015 is looking really strong. Um, so what we're working on right now are plans of how do we fill that funnel to let folks know about Williamson County, put us top of mind with people, and then continue to follow up with them so they start choosing Williamson County as their location for a vacation or for a meeting and so forth. So we're working on creating a whole marketing campaign just around meeting planners to let them start thinking about Williamson County. We're going to start bringing some of those folks in to show them what we have and what we do. Um, I think if we can get them here, they're probably going to book something here. So I think it's we need to look a little bit longer future than just what's happening in 2014, but really what's happening late 2015. We have six new hotels opening in the next 18 months, which means the hotels now are saying, oh no, now we've got a little bit more competition in our county. So what are we going to do to make sure that everybody's still getting filled and the rooms are still getting booked? And I think we're looking longer term to decide and that. this may be an unfair question but it just dawned on me when you said it do you know how many hotel rooms we have available in Williamson County? Right now 4,000. And most of those predominantly would be in the area of Franklin and Brentwood? Yes. And that does not include our bed and breakfast does it? It doesn't. It doesn't mm -hmm. in, in any way. So 4,000 rooms which is an amazing number for a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a very grow, a fast growing because just a few short years ago 25-30 years ago we really only had one hotel, and of course, <laughs> you, 
you may remember it was on Highway 96. Well, I take that back. We had two, but at Highway 96, um, you had the Holiday Inn, and that was pretty much it. And then you had one off of Goose Creek. Uh, there was a, it's an old, old hotel that was around. But in 25 or 30 years ago, I understand from the history buffs that tell me there's one. Of, you know, both of those were the, the kingpin. But you had none of that development up in uh, the Cool Springs area. No. None of that. No. That, the mall really helped start, jumpstart, I think, all of that development over there. And the hotels are wonderful. The Drury Inn, the new Drury Inn is beautiful. So we've got great properties that we can fill up, but we have to think longer term about how we're going to stay consistent. You know, the, we ebb and flow on the economy, of course. When the recession hit in 2009, I wasn't in Williamson County, but I was in Atlanta, and it, you know, it hurt. And so I think we always have to prepare for what ifs. What if that happened again? Or what's going to happen when these, we're going to add a thousand more hotel rooms. What's going to happen when all those open? How are we going to make sure everything's getting filled? So I think my question always is what if and how do we prepare for that what if and if we never use it great but if we have to then we've got a plan in place as so i sit here and i look across our county from say 30 or 40 thousand feet and you look down a few years ago uh, about six or eight now we had a, a kind of a trial that's turned into a uh, a trial experience that that's called arrington vineyards mm -hmm. that just really uh, kicks brooks and a few other investors wanted a place that people could go and 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 have that nightly experience and and it really was probably more about the locals but now it's turned into much much more than that yes it has and uh, recently you and i were on a, a ribbon cutting if you want to call it that of the um, spirits the distilleries that are beginning to be built across our community this one was 180 degrees across town from where the arrington is <laughs> if you were just looking at a map of Williamson County. I think the landscape of our community as these type of activities that are more engaged in a particular community are going to play a major role in tourism and people coming in. Just maybe they don't fly in from, from Topeka, Kansas or somewhere, but they draw in the other communities from Hickman, Dixon, Davison and things like that. Agreed yeah. or disagree? I agree. I was not at the Arrington Vineyards concert that Kix Brooks did a couple weeks ago, but a good friend of mine was. And I guess Kix said, who's from here? Raise your hand. And people raised their hand. But he, And then he said, who's not from here? Who's from two hours or more away? Mm -hmm. And they said 50% of the people raised their hand. So anything like that that can help bring folks into our community is so welcomed because it does help with hotel room stays and it might just be an overnight but we'll take that overnight and have them experience what we have here in Williamson County again those create natural salespeople for us if they can come here and we great show them a great experience yeah. and they say oh my goodness you have to go back and go to Arrington Vineyards it was an amazing experience then that that just helps us because you know we don't have the budgets of Nashville and we're doing that we're and thanks to social media we are able to spread our wings a lot further than we were back in the traditional advertising mm -hmm. days yeah. you know a few years ago so I th think it's a great opportunity whenever Kix Brooks does a concert at Arrington Vineyards or when Cheryl Groh plays the Franklin Theater for three nights in a row that just gives us not only does it bring folks in but the media around that is so great for us as well and it just gets our name out there for the last 20 plus years, and our Parks and Recreation Director, Doug Hood, mm -hmm. uh, will soon be retiring. And there was a time in Williamson County, Parks and Rec was not what it is today. In every major city that we have in, in, in our county, Fairview, Springfield, Thompson Station, Nolensville, Franklin, Brentwood, <laughs> if I overlooked any, I apologize, except for Thompson Station. We have recreational facilities. Now we have facilities in Thompson Station, but they're not a recreation center. And in the opening remarks you made of some 20 years ago, you were talking about you got your start in the Middle Tennessee area in Davis and working with sports marketing. Mm -hmm. I've said for a long time that this community, and particularly on Downs Boulevard at our soccer complex, is the third largest city on any given Saturday when the <laughs> moms and dads and the children are out kicking a soccer ball. Can we capitalize on the, on the sports that we have in our community as our community 
for the most part, a 40-year-old and under community uh, that has lots of children and lots of activities. Good, bad for your community development of CVB programs and opportunities. I think it's great. I think, you know, those, those youth events are so wonderful because it's mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, maybe an aunt and uncle, yeah. brother, sister. Yeah. So it brings in, it doesn't just bring in an A person, but it brings in four to six people that are going to stay for the weekend. And we've been talking to Tennessee Soccer, who holds two big tournaments in Williamson County each year. and Huge. Huge. Huge for us and such a great group. And we were talking about their scheduling, and he said, you know, we have big chunks of time because a family or a child might play at 10 a.m., but then they might not play again until 6. So what do they do for five hours? We love that because mm -hmm. we're like, we can provide you opportunities of things for these families to do. So they're going into our communities and they're going shopping or they're having lunch and they're <laughs> taking advantage of our attractions. So those are really great events for us. And I think when we were we met recently about Harlandsdale just to learn a little bit more about that development and things started popping into mind, even like archery, right? The, the, I think we have a wide opportunity to bring a lot more different types of sports here besides your traditional ones and more of our traditional ones as well, thanks to our great facilities that we have. In fact, the archery, we have an archery range, you may not know this, out at the Ag Park. I did not know that. And yeah. uh, it is uh, pushed and promoted and through our elementary schools and one of our schools, Lipscomb Elementary, has more archery uh, young girls than any one program that we've got and we've used the back drop of the hillside uh, to look at that and it's marked it's uh, I mean there's different uh, footage signs I guess that's correct English but uh, where, where you shoot 25 feet or 50 feet or beyond mm -hmm. or yards uh, and on any given Saturday morning there's a bunch of young people out Are there. there really? yeah, I'm so, going to have to swing over uh, there some Saturday and uh, check it well, out. Well, of course, right now, you don't want to go out there. <laughs> right, we, we, not we, this we, weekend, we, right. Uh, but uh, we do have to, limitations mm -hmm. why we can get there because of the accident that it occurred. We've got about two minutes left, and I'm sure that I've overlooked something that you wanted to touch base on. You know, I'd like to share back to the 150th. Um, the Convention and Visitors Bureau is doing a Friday blog called Franklin 150 Fridays. If you drive around Franklin and Williamson County right now, you see the banners up with the different folks on the banners. These are 12 individuals that were chosen. It's men, women, military, civilian, that had a role or was really affected by the battle. And so what we've done is we've taken those folks off those banners and we're doing a blog every Friday on, on one of them and focusing. And it's a great story. We write a story about them, but then we've now dug through diaries and books and Jay Sheridan and Eric Jacobson has helped us with this. And then we tell, we include their story from their words. Um, and it's fantastic. And they can go to our, our uh, Facebook face visit Franklin and read about those blogs. But the, I'm starting to look forward to every Friday because I want to <laughs> read about the next person. It's really been fun to promote promote the 150th, but then really try, try to bring it to a more personal level. That's great. Ellie Chan's been with us today. Our time's out as, as it just seems to go so rapidly every time we have a, a guest on here. Thank you for taking time to be with Thank us today. You. Good luck as the new director of the CVB in Williamson County. Thank you. I'm Rogers Anderson. We'll see you around town at the next show. Have a good day. should I make my password? Oh, I know. I'll make my password, password. Passwords should be unique, private, non-personal, and secure. Use more than one word, use different character classes, use symbols and numbers, and use multiple passwords for different sites. And always remember never to share your passwords.